you're a personal trainer, physical therapist, movement coach, corrective exercise specialist, okay. You have clients with bodies, bodies they want to change one way or another. Hopefully, you're the sort of professional who values providing results that stick, delivering desirable, lasting changes. So what are you changing? Tissue, you're changing tissues, muscle, adipose, connective, and skeletal tissues primarily. The good news is we have a sizable body of research and understanding how these tissues change. It's called tissue morphology. Force is the language of cells and movement is what they say. Dr. Andre Ospina. Roughly speaking, this means that by repeatedly asking tissues to produce movement results in specific morphology. Time and intensity are the two primary parameters determining the rate of change. How much force did your tissues produce and for how long, both in a single bout as well as repeated efforts over time. How many workouts delivered that stimulus over a year's time, two years, etc. So this is where things become more clear. We know there is a threshold of intensity requisite to sufficiently stress muscle tissue such that it receives an overcompensation response that is, lays down more, stronger tissue. We also know that muscle tissue is highly specific with regards to the direction of force production. Adaptations to bone is clearly laid out by Wolf's Law are governed by the same parameters, specificity with regards to the direction of forces, intensity, and the time over which the forces are applied. Finally, connective tissues, lacking their own blood vessels, depend upon the diffusion of fluids from the surrounding muscles in order to initiate metabolic and eventually structural adaptations. Again, there is a requisite intensity of forces involved applied consistently over a period of time to prompt tissue adaptation in muscle, bone, and connective tissue. This is all within the scope of my practice and experience. In my coaching, I essentially run quality control to make sure that the training stimulus is sufficiently stressful enough to necessitate adaptation and yet still within the person's ability to recover in time for the next session. Once you're within that space between minimum effective and maximum recoverable, all the other questions of programming become relevant. But before you're in that space, none of the training stimulus you choose will matter. None of them will create a lasting change to the tissues involved. So any trainer, any workout plan or movement system that creates lasting changes to tissue is knowingly or otherwise applying these principles governing tissue morphology. Now let's ask another question. How is a pattern set? What is the process and mechanism through which a pattern changes? How do you make these changes stick? Is the metric of success or advantage for a pattern the adaptation it stimulates within the body or the external change in the environment, like throwing a ball or crossing the finish line? So do changes to patterns necessitate tissue change along the way? And if the answer is yes, then how do the pattern level interventions meet the requirements outlined above for tissue morphology? If the answer is no, and therefore specific tissue changing interventions are required to facilitate the pattern change, how do you determine which? And also in the case of the latter, what are the pattern level interventions changing and through what mechanism? How does training one pattern, greasing the groove, so to speak, prepare a person to adapt to changing environments and contexts in which they might have to achieve a given task? And if the success of training one pattern, one way, sticks, how does this not imply rigidity and a lack of neuroplasticity to change the pattern or task when executed given different terrain or internal capacities? These questions need answers, and I'm not hearing any from the patterns-based systems. So let's start the conversation so we can be very clear about what we're changing, how, and why.